good. Okay, let me put you on mute real quick just to get in there and make sure that you're, um, I've, I'm in there now, so I wanna make sure that you're also. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's okay, no no problem at all. I was, oh, there you go, yeah. All right, cool. I'm moving you to a panelist and, we'll, and then I'll make you the host, okay? All right. Can you hear me? Okay, Terry, can you hear me? Uh, there, okay, cool. can you hear me now? All right, yeah, I can, yeah. yeah. I just Looks like you might've been doing that when I was logging on and logging back in because I didn't see you yet. So I want to make sure that uh, that was correct. All right, cool. So I'll, I'll make you the, the co-host now um, and uh, I'll be available if you need me to do anything. Okay. Uh, I can make you the host, but then I can't do anything to let people in or if there's anything wonky going on. So that is um, up to you. Would you want me to just uh, do co-host? Yeah, co-host it. Cool, all right. So when people come in, I'll move them over at, if they're committee members to panelists and you just uh, focus on your agenda. Or, all right, uh, sounds great. You got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Crazy. Hey, Terry, can you confirm you're the co-host? Where do I see that for co-host? Let's see here. Okay. okay, you just sent an email? No, 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 I just made you the co-host. So, okay, yeah, it, it, I'm not sure if you can see it on your end, but... Uh, it looks like yeah, you're yeah, solid. I see it now because okay. I just put up the panelist panel. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So I'll be again bringing people over when they dial in or uh, or uh, whatever the case is. And uh, if you need me, just let me know. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Perfect. Got it. All right.
Hello, hello. How you doing? Just fine. Okay, it looks like we got, I had to actually log in because I guess we've never done this one, but normally I just, you know, sign on and that's it. I guess it should be the same. Yeah, it had me go through the whole login, but no big deal. People will figure it out. Well, it happens. Yeah, not a big deal. Okay, great. Um, I guess we are waiting for what, about five, six, seven people, something like that, Terrence? Yeah, that's what's supposed to be here. Um, I will work with what we got, you know, when they get here or that. So, but we start on time. Well, I think I made it by one minute. Woo! <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, hey, did are you aware? I mean, I'm sure that's going to be repeated tonight, but I was at my shop today. They actually started cleaning up some of that garth today. Did you notice? No, I haven't been. I, I haven't been over there. Well, so what were they doing? Where at? Uh, they had they had you know the old end loader type of uh, trash truck. You know the one that they throw the barrels in the back. Yeah. But it didn't look like a full blown full size one. It looked you know scaled down like for the hills. Uh -huh. and, uh, five, six, seven people, but it looked like they were just grabbing a big pile at the um, northeast corner of that tunnel. I don't know if they're going into the tunnel at that point, but there was a big debris field at the northeast corner. Uh, okay. Well, we've been on them about it, so I guess they're they're figuring out we're not, you know, joking around. So. Yeah, and it looked like it's kind of narrowing out as far as the amount of campsites. Uh, it definitely looks like it's narrowing out. So who knows? Maybe the people are getting uh, smart and, you know, moving on out, like they said. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi guys. Uh, hello, Jason. How are you doing? Hi, hi guys. It's Michelle Grant. I'm just joining yep. in. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, I I don't know how far you've gone. I actually left town because uh, after uh, the incident last week, uh, I I needed to get out of LA for at least a couple of days because it really freaked me out. That was um, the guy that was sleeping on your in your front yard or something. So it was a bag that was left um, on a chair oh, by yeah. my, right next to my house. And I can only assume that someone was sleeping there. And I have lights that go on automatically, you know, and uh, clearly that didn't seem to make any kind of a difference. Um, so as you can imagine, I'm, you know, and I live alone, um, uh, you know, and the best advice the police could give me was basically to put a fence around my property. And that really doesn't fly with me. You know, that's not how I feel like our neighborhood is set up and it's certainly not how I want to live, you know? Have you thought about a ring camera yet? Something that you can oh, get I alerted? Have I have those, but I was asleep. And because did, I- Did you did, get a good video? No, because it was in a spot. It, uh. The ring camera, it was, I didn't, but um, that the one that faced there was low on battery. So it didn't really, you know, it registered, but it didn't get a good shot of him. Yeah. whoever it is um but the the other ones where the floodlights happen um you know no uh the problem also is because i take because of uh, the chemo and all of that stuff i have insomnia so i have to take something to sleep so when i sleep i am out um so you know obviously it's you know what i said to the police and actually what i said to uh liz carlson i was like what's it going to take you know, is it going to take somebody breaking into my house for some action to be taken here? Because frankly, you know, the police arrived about an hour later and they, the bag was gone. And clearly it seemed like the, the um, whoever it was ran back to get it once they saw the, the police. So they had to have been from the underpass. Michelle, where about are you in relationship to Rainier and the park? Are you real close to the park? No, I'm not. Oh. I'm across the street oh. from the freeway. Okay. I'm on hold. I'm on hold. I'm in the, the cul-de-sac on hold. At the dead end. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's kind of quiet there. Yeah. Very. Yeah. And we yeah. all know each other, which is great, but that's, you know, it only goes so far. Right. And, and we're really close. We're, you know, less than a thousand yards from the underpass. Right. How many homes do you think are on that Holt Street, if you had to guess? On my, on mine? Or, yeah. On just on my block, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us. Oh, not that many. Have, no, has anyone talked about maybe putting in 
a camera that would cover people coming into that dead end? Because if you're coming in the dead end, you either live there or don't belong there. Well, it's interesting because there's a lot of people who park their cars there um, mm. that don't live on the block. And it's been a bit of an issue for, you know, I obviously I park in my driveway. Um, uh, it's been a bit of an issue here and there. Um, I have taken now to, I just leave because of everything that's gone on and with Corona, I leave my cans out on the street, which is not great, I know, but um, I'm immunocompromised, so I don't really touch them very much and I don't want them close to my house given everything that's going on. So um, that actually sort of cordons off a little bit of my front area, um, but I think that what you're saying is actually not a bad idea. Um, but again, you know, the question I have, Terrence, and um, is, yeah. you know, because you and I haven't really had a chance to talk about this. Right. What exactly have you heard from Liz? I actually spoke to Kevin, I can't remember his last name, from the mayor's office, and I let him have it. And I basically between, you know, and what I said to Liz on, on uh, last week was, you know, and I said it in an email and I said it, you know, on the phone to her. I was like, look, I appreciate everything that you're doing. I said, but the fact of the matter is, is that the councilman's job is to make sure, a big part of his job is to make sure that the people in his community are safe. And I feel like he's failed. And I didn't, and then when I was talking to her, I said, I want a meeting with, uh, with Councilman Wesson. And she's like, well, and I said, look, I appreciate everything that you've been doing, but I didn't vote for you. I voted for Wesson and I voted for Garcetti. I didn't vote for their deputies. I voted for them. And as far as I'm concerned at this point, I expect, and I have done an enormous amount of volunteering and giving to the community in Los Angeles over and over and over again. And I helped to bring tourism in when I, had, when I started um, a gourmet food truck that became wildly popular. I've done an enormous amount. And what I said to you, and I've sat on, on, on um, on all sorts of committees and um, task forces and things like that. And I was like, you know, at this point, I expect the city to give to me. And I think I, at, at this point, I don't think it's unreasonable to say that the city needs to give back and to make sure that this is a safe space. Sorry, could you explain to me what the issue is? I came in late and I wanna, I'm really empathetic what you're saying. What exactly is the issue again on your street? Well, somebody was clearly sleeping right next to my house. Okay, they on, left the, a bag on the sidewalk. On the, so I, I just want to get the, on the sidewalk. No, next to my house, not on the sidewalk, next wow. to the house. Okay. I found a bag and a chair next to my house. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. and then about an, after we called the police, um, an hour later when the police arrived, and I don't take issue with the cops at all. I have to tell you something, they have been lovely. Just, yeah. I mean, absolutely yeah. wonderful. Yeah. But they're hamstrung. You know, I mean, they told me flat out that there's nothing that they can do. Um, and they're like, we're frustrated. We would love to help you more. But, you know, and their suggestion was put a fence around your property. That's not, that doesn't, that's me doing what, that's somebody else's job. Frankly, I shouldn't have to live in a fenced off space simply because somebody else can't do their job properly. I have a little free library in front of my house. Um, I have, you know, people who come and, avail themselves of it. I grow vegetables and fruit and things like that to give to other folks. Right. That, that is the nature of who I am as a human being. It's not to fence off my world. And, but I also still need to feel safe. And you know, one of the things I love about Rainier Village, one of the things I love about what's been happening over these last years, I've lived, you know, or I've owned the house since 2001 lived there since 2004 and i've watched the 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 community shift and change and what i love about soro uh really i've been watching it and being involved in it as much as i can um i got really sick so i had to sort of step away from a lot of things is i love the community and i love that it's not it's a it's a very simple community it's not like overblown or trying to be something it's not and I love that it is a mixed community of folks. It's not, you know, one strata or another strata. I love that. And I worry about, you know, and I realize, Terrence, that it's not in the Soro jurisdiction, but I, I worry about the children 
who are going to be walking with their mothers and fathers or whoever over to Shenandoah school once schools are open again. And the kids who are the teenagers are going to be coming through um, uh, to go to Hamilton High because they all come to that school and they walk by my street all of the time. I see them. May I, I'm, my first time here, would someone explain to me what is the purpose of this committee and what we're trying to achieve? Well, uh, while we were, we were waiting, okay, Pierre, we were waiting for a, a couple other people, but I don't see them and we got to move on to the meeting. But basically what this is, is a subcommittee of public safety yes. to put together for the issues that are going on with the homeless crisis that's going on in our neighborhoods. Because Perfect. what's happened is, it has gone from where it was just a few people that were living amongst us on the streets to where now we have full-blown encampments. We yeah. are that, uh, yes. ro robbery is up, theft is up, uh, uh, burglary from motor vehicles is up. All this is up, 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 and up as we're seeing that. And the city is not doing anything. And as part of the charter, the neighborhood councils have it the power to direct city services and that's why we brought this meeting together to be able to see what are three issues that we could start with to be able to because what happened was the city was shining on those neighbors who live right by the garth tunnel i saw it on next door um i had worked with the neighbors back in 2015 when they were having illegal dumping there and we were able to actually get some of the people who were illegally dumping under the freeway we had them arrested and we got the whole thing cleaned up. Now I saw it on next door about what, about a month ago, Michelle? Yeah. So I got involved, and I was able to get the city services over there to clean the streets, start. Uh, we got no parking signs under the town temporary on a Friday. And they were able to really clean up as much as they could based upon the hamstrings of what the mayor is doing to the different departments. So we're gonna, we're trying to put together this committee so that we could do a full court press on what we would want to see every week, every month, whether it's the, I have some ideas for the business. Um, Melinda's not here, but they were having problems with a homeless guy who took up residence over in one of the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, public storages. And the police said they couldn't do anything. So um, can I uh, tell you the two successes that um, we have had at Rainier Park and Cattaraugus Tunnel as of very recently? Uh, I'll start with Rainier Park. And this is a success story. Yeah. Totally. What okay. you did, Peter, is amazing. Well, that's very sweet of you. But it's a good lesson for us all because we kind of used the system and we used each other. Lori Levine and I become dear friends. She's so effective, as you all know. And so are all of us. And so these five Hispanic guys with their bicycles and carts were sleeping by the park. They had a blue Chevy Silverado that they sometimes slept in the flatbed. Everybody's calling, ask, ask LAPD, and they come out and they can't do anything. We, we know the story. We know, we know right. what's going on. And so Lori started the first letter to uh, Liz Carlin, CD10. Liz, right. Liz is a hero. And Liz then um, helped us contact Chris Baker. Baker's on uh, vacation. Chris Baker's the lead officer. I you know who he is, yeah. Uh, he's on vacation. So a guy named Jose Bermudez came out. Awesome dude. I spoke to him for 20 minutes. And you know what? Without being a, a badass, without being, uh, he was polite, respectful. He just kept talking to him. He kept coming back. I'm going to backtrack for a second. We found out these guys weren't only just drinking beer in the park. They were junkies. They were shooting up in the bathroom. They were they defeated that lock, and they were nodding out. And there were not one but two heroin ODs within five days in Rainier Park. I've only lived here for two years. I'm new, right? But I've never seen that, right? And so within two five days, two ODs, and Gonzalez, God bless him, he got in action and he kept coming back because we asked him to. Liz asked him to. Lori asked him, I did, you know, the neighbors, we all asked him, and he took care of this, and they're gone. Now, I noticed tonight, Lori called me, there's somebody on the other side of the park, but I'm just telling you, this was a positive thing by using Liz Carlin CD10, and then going to the lead officer, and because uh, the, the Ask LAPD thing doesn't seem to work. The second thing we're doing, uh, I just want to let you know what we're doing. 
Cattaraugus Tunnel has been a problem with homeless and uh, mentally ill and drug abuse in that tunnel. We all know about it. We all know about the dumping. We know about the endless cycle. We might not know that on uh, July 12th, uh, a resident, May Sam, uh, who was walking through with his infant in a stroller and holding his two-year-old and his four-year-old's hand, and a mentally ill guy released out of God knows where came at him with a blunt edge weapon. With a weapon. Guy's got three kids, two ki two toddlers and a freaking infant and a stroller. All he could do is run for his life with these two kids. And now, uh, I'm, I've, I, uh, I've been asking the park commissioner, so I'm always in the park. You might see me with my dog, Moxie, you know. And, and I talked to the a lot of the, with the women, a lot of the mothers. They're carrying mace. One's got a okay. Glock 26 in her purse. You're so freaking scared of that tunnel. So we immediately started, a go we immediately um, had an idea. We saw that on Motor Avenue going under the Highway 10 has boulders on each side of the sidewalk that prevent homeless from pitching tents against the wall. I noticed that because I buy my bike all the time. Started cold calling CD5, that's District 5. Got the guy, Lee Wallach, who did it. I asked him, how'd you do it? He said, Elves did it. I go, oh, come on, what do you mean? So we went through two years of a permit process, got a no from the city of engineers. So we raised the money, Elves did it. Meaning they got a permit to steam clean and they freaking dropped the boulders and it works. And he, his motto is, this is Lee Wallach in CD5, he goes, better to ask forgiveness and ask permission. So, so I'll just say, CD5 is, is Coretz's. Um, that is okay. correct. Right. So okay. I, I don't and want to I name any Lee. names in our district because people. No, I, I I've met Lee when I when Lee's I did a, uh, when I had a grilled cheese truck. I was dealing with Coretz's people. He's a um, lovely guy. He's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. He came over to Cotteraugus, told us exactly what we needed to do. So I'm happy to report that we have raised through a GoFundMe three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars or so so far. We have a contract for sixty six boulders which are going to be delivered when we ask for it. And, um, and we have a, 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 a bid for, you know, to steam clean it. And we, and the leftover money, we're just gonna put a nice little welcome to Rain, Rainier Village mural. And we're wondering if we need a permit for that or not, we're working on it. But I'm just telling you, we are- When you guys action. are ready for, for steam cleaning, let me know because when I used to uh, do uh, food truck Fridays over in Westchester, I had a company that I worked with a lot um, well, and they would come through and steam clean. We got a price for 500. If you can be, it's 300 feet by 10 feet. Them. If you I'll can give be, you, I'll you give can you, be 500 bucks, that's our lowest bid. And uh, I'll give you the information. I'll send oh, it to you. Great, Michelle. Thank you. That's so easy. This is an example of us being elves and doing what the city and Lee Wallach and the various people in uh, District 5 called um, envir sorry, Homeless Prevention Environmental Design. Okay, uh, I think that's fantastic. What happens when the city gets sued because of ADA compliance now because of that? They haven't gotten sued on uh, Motor Avenue. Uh, well, they've already I been sued. They're, be, they're currently in a lawsuit because of, not that, but because of blocking of the sidewalk. Well, okay, the sidewalks aren't blocked, if I may say. The rule is you need three foot of clearance. That's right. a 10 foot wide sidewalk in each side. The boulders will be two to two and a half feet each, meaning that we'll put them in an oblong, you know, oblong right. the wall. So there'll still be eight feet of clearance. So we're not going to be breaking any rules. Because we Peter, did you say, sorry to interrupt, and sorry, I had to step away for a second. Did you say you've already started a fundraising campaign? Yes, it's a GoFundMe, it's called, under GoFundMe, it's called Cattaraugus Tunnel Safety and Beautification Project. And uh, a lot of us have put in anywhere from 25 to a hundy to 300 bucks and it's all local and we're not like putting it on a, on a Facebook. We're not putting it. It's just us right. going through each other concerned right. Rainier residents and just saying you want to be an elf. And you know, we've got CD five guiding us on how they did it. CD 10 knows about it. I don't want to name names. They asked me not to. Jose Bermudez and Chris Baker know all about it. They say, you know, you know, we're going to help you best we can. So, all right. Am I? Am I? Is that I mean, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. What do you think? I, I'll tell you what. I I don't want to 
I'm not trying to solve homelessness. I, I'm 16 years sober. I have a big heart for people who suffer from drugs and alcohol addiction and from, you know, and from mental illness. My wife's a therapist, all right? But I cannot have them in that tunnel, which is a choke point for mothers coming through with their children, for kids walking to Hamilton High, walking to Shenandoah, walking to the park. My wife gets wh wolf whistled. Because I'm a sober guy, I know to talk to junkies, I would go over and talk to these guys. And, you know, they're out of Pelican Bay, which is a max security prison in California. And they're, you know, they're, they're, they're dealing meth. You know, it's like, come on. But, but this is exactly the same thing that we're talking about with uh, the Garth Tunnel. It's a choke point. Garth is worse. You're right. So maybe this can be, if this works, and I think it's going to, it's going to, you know, maybe this is something the elves can, can do Garth. So, uh, I mean, I think the first thing I was at, I, before I left town uh, yesterday, um, I drove through. There's, uh, I think Steve, it was uh, mentioned that there's a, a lot less homeless. The big, long tent thing is gone, but there is a humongous amount of trash. And there are a lot of people who are coming over to grab trash. There are some new homeless people who have like new tents that have shown up. The big problem is if, if they get the people out and don't immediately clean it up, then other people think it's totally fine to post up there. That's and, right. It's an endless cycle of cops and, right. without teeth to move them, of calling and, Liz Carlin to clean it up, and they clean it up and it gets dumped on again. Endless and cycle. I think I can, I have a little measuring doodaddy from my truck days, food truck days. So I can actually measure um, the exact footage from the wall to the court to the curb um uh it's i because i used to have to measure from the truck Probably to the feet. bathroom it's like it's like it's like nine feet and ten inches is what it is. over it over there i'm pretty sure it's kind of uh i'm pretty sure it is i've, I've walked it's i mean because it's definitely more narrow but i definitely think that you can do um a three foot uh walk space ada space um even taking it to four feet and um and then have something up against the wall and I think that that would certainly um, help to, to prohibit, make it prohibitive for That's folks you to can do. it's okay. You know, and I imagine we're gonna have cleaning issues so we have these boulders there. We're gonna have to have the neighbors. I'm just basically, us neighbors are gonna pay our, we have one gardener who comes every Tuesday, does our street. We're gonna throw him some money, just go over and blow and blow between the rocks, you know, on Tuesdays. Here's an extra. <laughs> Peter, I love your gardener recommendation, but I also just donated, uh, to the campaign so thank you for and that is so cool thank you and thank you I will after this I'm on, on my behalf of all of us because if no, this I, works I live on Bolt right after Katara uh, so Michelle I think I'm on the other side of you or, yeah uh, thank so. you so much but Beverly thank you on behalf Cadillac, of all of us right? the, the, I this is I'm telling you this you know I asked like CD5 how'd you do it and they said do it this way you will so, not succeed going through the city can, can I ask a question is maybe, I, I, my wife and I just moved here into the neighborhood uh, about a year, a year ago. So we'll be, new, you know, uh, we're quite young, obviously. We're only two years um, ourselves, yeah. I, I'm just curious, maybe from those of you who are more tenured, like what is, what, why does it take so much effort to get the city to <laughs> also accept responsibility? And is there any way to change that? Parents, that one's you, babe. Political. Sure. <laughs> it's all, it, Rick's absolutely right. It's 100% political. Back in 2015, we asked Garcetti and uh, council president at the time, Herb Wesson, to declare a state of emergency for the city of Los Angeles to really get federal funds into the city. Uh, because at the time, we only had 15,000 homeless in the city. And they refused. They dug their heels in, said, no, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And now we have the explosion of the problem now, and now this is where Garcetti's going to the taxpayer saying, come and give us money, give us money. We want to do bridge housing and everything else, and that's where we're getting bridge housing at $700,000 a yeah, unit. Which is so, ridiculous. I mean, so where do they come up with these I, astronomical okay. numbers? Can I focus the question? I'm sorry, because I, I think that there's, there's the problem we can't solve, and then I guess what I'm more interested in is, like, we're not going to solve that here. Like, the the misuse of the funds with homelessness and the city. Yeah, but you, you were, you were asking me what, what had happened on yeah, and, that, and that's what it is. It's political. But what we can do here is like what Peter's done over or is going to be doing on Cataragus. We do the same thing on Garth. 
Although the tent that was in Garth, he's now moved to La Cienega Boulevard. He's under the freeway over there. Lovely. And Lovely. and that's part of the problem that happens, Peter, is when you said, oh, well, we got these guys moved from the park. They're somewhere else right now creating help. I know, I know, sir. I, I mean, I know. I just got to have them out of the park where mommies and babies and toddlers are. We got to have them out of there. Parents, we got to have them out of this choke point. Sorry so, to interrupt. You know. yeah. Why does the city cal? Why do why do our representatives seem to have to? Why does it take so much effort to get them to deal with? Like, is there a better way to communicate with people? Is there some kind of? How do we get them to pay attention well, and it, actually utilize the neighborhood council? Media. What, like, well, not even the media because they've done that before. What's her name even lives over on Holm, and it, it hasn't been always successful. Uh, uh, so what it is. Name? Uh, she works for the L or she worked used to work for the LA type. Rick, who, who am I thinking of over there? I can't think. I don't, I don't know the name. But anyway, though, but what we've done is it was like when they brought the issue about the Garth Tunnel. We got that cleaned up the next week. Got that done immediately. We're able, as neighborhood council, is able to direct services. But really, what this meeting was about is what services do you want to see? Where do you want to see them? And what are the three NML that we can do right now? Because I also see some long-term, like the Venice Hotel has 28 units in it, and they're sitting on it. There's housing money to buy that property and convert that hotel immediately mm -hmm. into 28 units. That the one that burned down? It didn't burn down. It, 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 they had a fire, but they didn't burn down. It didn't well, yeah, burn yeah, down. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, the one that had caught fire on cataracts in Venice. Well, and they're exactly. converting, they're converting yeah. the La Cienega Hotel or motel. Right, right. The grand, okay, uh, so right, but I've, those don't have 28 units like that one does. So that's one of the things for that. The other thing is that business owners are complaining that every day they go out when they come to work and the homeless are sleeping on the property. We actually, exactly. The, the, the city has it where we could actually get the business owners to sign a letter saying that if there are homeless on there, they come through and sweep up the, the police basically, you know, have them move along or arrest them for trespassing. You see, if you make things where, because right now, the city is basically giving all these homes almost like a vacation. You could lay here, you could lay here, you could do your drugs here. And you, you don't do have to follow any of the goddamn rules that all the taxpayers have to follow. Correct. Exactly. Right. And, and then all I got to say is a tale of two cities, Culver City and the city of Los Angeles. Damn well, straight. Part yeah, of, part of that, though. One at a time. Uh, Rick, what, what is it that you're okay. saying? I mean, look, here, here's one of the connections that I personally have. My brother-in-law works in the federal court system with the judge. Wait, what does that have to do with Culver City, Rick? Because they haven't been sued like L.A. That's the No, way absolutely do. not. What the city, city of Culver City does is they made it where you could sleep on the streets from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. At 6 a.m., you got to be out there. And don't tell me about the Boise lawsuit because it, it doesn't really affect for the city of Los Angeles. The problem is, is the city of Los Angeles, and I've said this to Eric Garcetti himself, you're not enforcing the laws. You start making it where it's uncomfortable, where they got to pull their tents up at 6 a.m. Yeah. and repitch yeah. them at 9 p.m., they're going to want to move it into homeless housing. They're going to want to go into the bridge housing. And, and, well, and, we, and we need to make them want to because right now they do not want help. Right. They like living the no. way they're living. Exactly. Because there's no rules. They do it because right. there's there no rules. There are no right. rules. Right. And that's where Culver City, they enforce that rule. At 6 a.m., you're gone. You know, you could almost see zero homeless in Culver City. Because well, they're, they're moving back in, just so you know. They're where on the Venice and Sepulveda side, they're under yeah. on the Culver City side yeah. now. And, they got, and they've they also, got some dude also had put up a tent outside Sony, which I thought was actually pretty smart, so that every rich person who worked there had to drive by and look at them. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah. Uh, this, last long. I, I get it, because Culver City is not tolerating it. Right. And as soon as we stop tolerating it, it's going to stop. Right. You're absolutely right, Lori, because what happens is like when our neighborhood council says about the homeless, and this is what we're going to do. All of a sudden we get neighbors and they're the loudest ones who scream. What are you doing to the homeless? Why are you doing it? Because we want right. them to get help. 
We want right. them to get help. We we would never. They don't do want that. help forced upon them, and I guess that's where we differ with those neighbors. Right. We and, realize and, these people need help, and they're not in their right mind answer, to get it themselves. And, my uh, answer to that is, come live in my house. You know, if I if someone is saying, and, and look, my heart goes out to somebody, anyone right. who finds himself in that situation. Prior to Corona, prior to all this stuff. Right. I used to volunteer down on Skid Row at a, um, a women's shelter. And I was teaching women who are living in all sorts of various forms of housing how to feed themselves and feed their families in the best possible way right. they could and affordably. I had to stop because there was a typhus outbreak and there was the TB outbreak. Right. And that is what I've talked to Liz Carlson about. It's what I've said you know, in a lot of this, the um, next door conversations. And what I brought up in this conversation with Kevin, whose last name I don't remember, um, over in Garcetti's office. And I'm actually, yeah, I'm having a, he's, I'm expecting a call from him on Friday. So I told him I'd be back in town. And um, I basically, I, I exploded on the phone with both him and Liz. You know, I was like, I cannot live this way. At least when I was down volunteering, I could go home. I don't feel safe because of Corona. I don't feel safe being around people for very much. I have stayed very much inside. This is the first right. time I have gone anywhere and I'm camping. So that way I'm not around too many people. Right. Um, and I, I hear what you're and now saying. I don't feel Michelle. safe in my house. So what do I do? Well, that's why we could be, be in this meeting so that we could start working on these issues. Because if we don't start coming together, because what they like to have right. is they like to keep us compartmentalize and away from each other because then, then we don't like find problems. solutions but when we come together we can solve any problem they can throw at us exactly and that's really right. what peter was trying to say right but we have we have banded together and because of that they have to return our calls now yeah. right. they know yeah. we're all talking to each other absolutely exactly. and that's why it's so important if we start with three either projects or or what we want to do, do we want to get it where we, the neighborhood council pays for rocks and we'll put it in. That means permits. I mean, um, GoFundMe seems to work because that way, you know. Does the neighborhood council have the money for, to not have to go through? They were never going production. to offer money for that. Uh, that was told flat out. It was, it was only going to be. Who told you that? Liz Carland. And also the, right. the kind folks, Lee Wallach and others over in CD5 who are unsuccessful on motor. Lee Wallach, he's not, he's not with the council office, is he? Uh, he's in, it's his official title, and I'll look at something like Motor Avenue something project. No, he's with, he's with the Farmer's Market. Yeah, he's Lee's not. not... The council office. Yeah. Motor Avenue Improvement Association. Right. Yeah, I think he's part of Farmer's Market, though. Yeah, yeah he, he is he's the, the Farmer's, Farmer's Market, Market Manager. Right. Okay. Right. But let's look at three things that we could actually do okay. today that we could see. Because, I mean, I can even get it where we get no parking. I hate to do it to the neighbors, but no overnight parking in the Garth Tunnel. I think that that's would, really important. That I, think would be, I think that would be a great idea. Well, I don't see the, the neighbors. Problem. Oh, wait, 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 wait. One at a time, please, so that I know we're passionate about it, but let's get one at a time. Rick first, then Lori. Yeah, I mean, my shop is around the corner, so I'm, I'm there. Look, the ones that park in the tunnel are actually the homeless, the people with the neighborhood people. Unfortunately, most of them in that real, real close are like some of the apartments. I don't think they raise a big enough stink compared to what we're doing in Rainier with Cataragas. And I think that's it. We got to get the neighbors on board that are right there to, to step up and be on board. But as far as parking, the only cars that I see parked in that tunnel are the ones that they're sleeping in or working out of. It's not really the neighbor's car. No. So it's no, not, it's it's no not parking the between cars. 11 and 5 a.m. then. No, I think that's really good because it, it isn't the neighbor's cars. Because I go through right. there. I've been, you know, I did that one time where I walked through. That was a mistake because I yeah. ended up having uh, an altercation a bit with one of the people. But out of that, actually, I got a phone call from Liz Carlin because I called irate and very upset. And she called me right back. Right. Um, but, well, that's one thing that we can get done, that the neighborhood councils can get those, those signs up. We can work at the council office, DOT, to have it done. And can then also... That, we, can we get it really cleaned up right away? Uh, well, I if, think, if, if you guys would be cool enough to let me get 
Cotaragus fixed up. In, it'll take three weeks. We're looking at the first week of September. Right. So I'd hate to have everybody in Garth come to Cotaragus and fuck us up. Well, no, no, no. no. That's I fine. understand I just want that. To get the trash yeah. out. Let's get let's get Cotaragus squared away for first of September. Right. And then let's attack Garth. So, okay. but we want another cleanup in Garth, correct? Not yes, just please. in Garth. Tell that me, is, Lori. That, Tell me where you want it, Lori, and I will direct them. Well, Jesus, how about right alongside Sprouts? Well, that's just, a, just is above that, in is that and out. In Sor is that in Sora, though? Because I think I that's actually that's Paul. That is Pacific Division. That's not Chris. That's Pacific Division. We've spoken about it a hundred times. That's that is Palm's that Neighborhood Council. Up. That's Palm's Neighborhood Council. Yeah. I have relationships I mean, over there, so I. So you want Sprouts, okay? I mean, we well, may be able to like spread it out, but I think that I, I agree with that's Peter. That's why. Uh, just hang on one second. That's why I sent you guys the map. Right. Right. So okay. That you would know what the air boundaries are, because see. I can't be a king in one area and then try to rule another area. So, but anything within the Soro boundaries, we could get behind and help. So if it's Garth, yes, I'll talk okay. to Palms about behind uh, Palms Neighborhood Council. And it's Rainier Park. I mean, it's, it's got it's to yeah. be it's the jewel of the Soro. Well, right what, what do you want done at Rainier? Well, ultimately what we want done, we'd like a lot of those heavy horse uh, exercise machines around the border of the park. I disagree. I disagree. But um, uh, we have that discussion. I disagree. I, I think it's okay. But um, I think that's something that we we can discuss and talk about. What about some that could improve immediately? I think, kind of I think that we should focus on safety right now. Honestly and truly, okay. I think that that's the most crucial thing to me. And garbage. And it's my issue. Rid of getting rid of all the garbage because that also is a safety issue right that's what i feel like too i feel like if you can get rid of the, the trash and you can i mean because frankly who is the district that's on the other side of the freeway there what, where, where? where no no on the other side is it because i know it's not soro oh there. no soro goes all the way down to the culver city uh city limits right there actually where where the alley is that runs parallel to washington boulevard we go all the way down to there all right we go I to think the other Canada side of boulevard. venice is correct okay so i think that we also have to look at both so both sides of uh the garth underpass and really cleaning that up and cleaning that out because what ends up happening what ended up happening is and having those no parking signs and putting those boulders that we're talking about along the side of the sidewalk where there's no housing. Are we um, talking about on Beverly Wood? No, it's, it becomes Corning there, I think. And it's, if you go along, along the freeway. Along that's the freeway. Wood. That's, that's Beverly, Beverly Wood. Wood. That's Beverly Is that Wood. Beverly Wood there? That's where yeah. the gentleman who has the side-by-side -side refrigerator yeah. freezer that runs, that, that he's plugged into. Well, I no, think no, I'm not talking that. about there. I'm talking the about on the other side. side. I'm talking about if you go over as if you were crossing over and you're heading as if you were what? heading towards the Cataragus Tunnel. Um, there's that whole, uh, you know, it's actually the spot where the guy has the refrigerator freezer running, which is insane. Um, that has greenery. On the other side, it's all concrete and it abuts the, the freeway. And that's where you also have tents that just keep mm -hmm. going. Okay. North or south side of the freeway. That sound like Beverly Wood Street, but maybe it's Beverly not. Wood is on the south side of the freeway. That's where the refrigerator is. That's Beverly Wood. Okay. I, I'm not is, sure. Yeah, that is, is the that, south side. The, 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 the street that goes all the way to La Cienega, but then it, there's the uh, oh, the, side of the liquor store yeah. where all the yeah. shootings That's out. Beverly Wood. Okay. And that's been a problem forever. And honestly, for the last five years, uh, we have tried getting the people of the area to care enough about their own area to call 311 for garbage removal. They don't really participate. Look, I've tried for 15 years to get them to put pothole repairs in that alley, and they do one pothole and call it quits after they send out all the equipment. They'll do that, one and leave 30 behind. You know what, Rick? No offense. That is typical L.A. city bullshit like Terrence yes. is talking about. And if you knew you the can't even tax, get these people... There. Oh, the cops are here for the homeless dude outside. Good. All right. All right, go get him. Well, he's, 
<laughs> he's drunk and he's right. passed out in the damn park again. Bring bring your tablet out there, Lori. Do it live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, live stream. A question, Terrence. Yes. How can we achieve maximum power? What could this committee do linking up with other like minded oh, people? There's committees? even a woman out here talking. Hang on, Laurie. I'm trying to get this question. So Sorry. That's okay. What, because we there. all have contacts, what could we do to increase our power and to help the big changes that we all want? Well, it is by one, by preparing this list of what we want, and we will tackle it as a neighborhood council because we are elected leaders. We represent your interests. And part of the problem that's we go out when we would ask neighbors, what do you want? You know, like I said about the homeless before, and, and then you get the neighbors who'd say, oh no, we don't want that. You know, leave them alone. They're just trying to live. And then I try to tell them, I'd say, would you allow your pet to live like that? Oh no, but, but you know, they're people, they can do what they want. So, and that's what we need to do is pull together Give us the list of what we need to get done, and we will just have the list and tackle it. They say they want they want the garbage cleaned up over on Beverly Wood, Garth, and over by uh, Rainier Park. Well, and underneath, like beyond, it's on the other side of. Uh, if you go through the underpass, so you on Beverly Wood. Are we going, going north or south? You know, my brain isn't so great with the north. Oh, and south. towards Beverly Hills, or are we going towards Culver City? Let's heading start towards Culver City. Okay. Oh. Okay, so you go through the tunnel, right? So Beverly Wood actually loops around and then hits Cadillac, right? But if you go through the tunnel at Garth, right? And, yeah. and you have that whole neighborhood there. That's what I'm talking about as well, where on the side, um, if you look to your left, there's, it's all concrete. It's basically the, the freeway. full string yeah. of the, the freeway. Yeah. And yeah. that's where you have the, the homeless sort of, it, it just, it's the line of the homeless that go from there all the way through the tunnel. And so it's about doing the cleanup and really, unfortunately, as much as I hate to say this, really cleaning out these folks and helping them to get into a place so that way and making it uncomfortable for them, you know, right. in some fashion or another. And I like Peter's idea of the boulders. And frankly, if there is money in the neighborhood council that can be allotted to the Cataragas tunnel, and can be a lot no, of, I'll be saying no money has come from any thing. I other understand, than but this is the question I'm asking. Okay, so whether or not, if there's money that can be allotted that's in the neighborhood council budget in some fashion or another that can go towards uh, what Peter's doing over at Cataracus. Why would you not make your own go or another GoFundMe and just talk to neighbors? I mean, there's I, no right money. Now, Right now, I'm just, I'm trying to find out what's possible. So well, let me I'm, just I'm finish just my to thought help process. You that they don't have any I understand, money. but let me just finish the thought process and then you can tell me. Um, and then see if there's money also to do the same thing on, on Garth. I do agree that we should be doing a GoFundMe, but the question is whether or not we'll have enough money, you know? Well, I mean, just to, so I was told by Liz Carlin, there is no money for this. If we had gone through permits, we'd be also looking at thousands of dollars of permit fees, and therefore we also, to, yeah. So yeah. So uh, so the only way, the only way, was for neighbors to chip in. Terrence, it, it seemed right. I mean, this well, the, well, I understand where you're both coming from. Yes, the neighborhood council has money. What Liz Liz doesn't uh, hold our budget. There, there, the budget that Liz was talking about was Council Member Wesson's money. They're different pots of money, and we would be able to work to be able to see what we can do. I understand what you're trying to do, Peter, and I understand what Michelle's trying to ask. So, but so explain to us. So, so there, how much, how much money might if sixty six boulders is going to cost cost us anywhere from twenty one, tw it'll be. 2100 and then the placement is either going to be could be another 500 if we've got a forklift okay uh, so so let's ballpark it at 20 you know 2500 yeah is that a number that the city that you're that we could pull out of a somebody the neighborhood, council. Uh, the neighborhood council yeah if the, if the board votes for it to be able to beautify the community it's that's how we would look at it as would they beautification Huh? Would, they, would they need to go through the city and get the permit process that see the, the neighborhood councils are the city 
we, we would have to work with them and see, and that would be through public works. And they'd have, have to, to vote to do it, really. Well, then, Correct? Then, 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 I understand that. Yeah, yeah I mean, my, my, my perspective from this is if you go through the city and you guys are funding it, the city or the councilors are funding it, then they're aware of it. But theoretically, this has to go through the city. Peter's doing it kind of on the down low. We're raising our own money. We're doing it on the down low. And when shit hits the fan, it doesn't go back to the neighborhood council. It just goes, hey, this shit happened. We put it Those in it. and Those you know, that's it. it. Yeah. That's it. Right. If you go and then, through and the then, whole process, you're in trouble. All right. You know, we have a lot of concerned people who are uh, pro homeless. They are, you know, civil rights people. We right. you know the names of these people. God bless them for their hearts. Right. But they, you know, they will put up roadblocks. And so if we want to get it done, it was GoFundMe and be elves. Right. And so right. it's just plain and simple. And I'm thankful for all your help. And I, I don't mean to at all be rude to anybody. I just, I, I really tried, how could I do this? I, I tried to go through the city and it was really explained to me, you're gonna get, take two years to get permits. They're gonna cost you a lot of money and you're, you're not gonna get them. And so I don't want May Sam and his kid being attacked by some mentally ill guy in the, in the tunnel. So one of the Fire. other things that the police actually said to me when they were at my house is to see whether or not um, uh, we could get the city to install lights under That'd the tunnel. Great. That'd be awesome. Um, oh, I think okay. both let, let, me, let me answer that right now. Um, when we were there, we, me and Mike were in the tunnel three weeks ago. We noticed that the lights are not only dim, but most of them don't work. Yes. We already, have, now not the cataracts, but we're talking about the Garth one right now. We already have an order in, they're, try, they're going to be putting in not only new lights. But, but like bright ones, right? Bright ones, absolutely. That's what they're working on. And they're, it's in the budget. They're, they're putting it together to see exactly which lights they could actually, because remember that that's a, that's a, if you think of it as like cell towers, it's a co-location. Caltrans right. is above and the city is below. And the right. city is responsible for everything under the freeway and Caltrans is above, but they have to work together with it. And that's what, so we're already working on getting the lights in there. And they're supposed to be having within the next week, week and a half is the actual proposal of what the lights are and what they're going to look like so we can understand what it is. So as the neighborhood council, we've already worked on that. Does Cataragus need that? Peter? Gosh, it would certainly be nice if it was brighter. Uh, you know, the light, there are lights. Okay. It would be great if we had more light in there. That'd okay. Be an awesome I'm going to go. I have time Friday. I'm going to swing by there when it gets dark so I can see exactly the placement of the lights and what it looks like. All right, give me, a, give me a jingle and I'll try to meet you over there, bro. Okay, great. Yeah, we could absolutely do that. So then um, if that's the case, we'll go look at it. We'll map it out and then I'll return back to public works and say, hey, we need this one done also. Oh, that'd be awesome. Because so, the, the way we sold it, just to let you know, Michelle, the way uh -huh. we sold it was it was a public safety issue absolutely. because the tunnels were too dark. Not because absolutely. we want the homeless gone but because we want to be able to have it so it's brighter and safer. And we want these people to be in housing. We want yep. to be able to protect them. How can yep. we, you know, we have a thousand people a year die on the streets. That, Terrible. you know, Terrible. How many, that's three people a day just die on the streets Terrible. because of exposure and fights and drug overdoses. And I can't have that anymore. No, I need look, this fix. I mean, I I had, I had been talking to Liz about trying at the very least because, you know, having been through the whole typhus and TB thing going on down in Skid Row, I was I like, was at the very least. You. We were filming movies and we were seeing it. You know, I'm a and set medic. That's I what I do. Like, okay. Well, so I was like, look, you know, at the very least, maybe get some hand washing in, maybe, you know, or something and, and Porter Johns, something. And, you know, I caught a lot of flack when I, I mentioned this on, on Nextdoor, but my feeling was, at the very least, make sure these people are in, if they're gonna be there. And I was a little bit resigned at that point, you know, to them being there because I'd been told over and over again, can't do anything. At least give them some version of sanitary conditions 
So that way we're not causing more of a spread of disease. Well, okay. Um, so if you're asking for that. Would no, we, I'm not. I'm no, actually no, no. not asking now for that. Liz told me that she actually just got approval for it when I talked to her, um, uh, you know, at the end of last week. Um, and she was like, I have great news. And I'm like, you know, if you'd called me on Monday and told me, I would be thrilled. Today, after having this horrible thing happen on Thursday, not so much. Okay. I really don't feel so great about that. But the okay, question yeah. becomes, right. you know, when you're talking about, you know, Caltrans, you know, living across the street and my neighbors living, you know, up against abutting this, the freeway, is there a way to work with Caltrans to do a regularly scheduled sweep up there of, you know, of, uh, and using the, the, again, sort of the public yeah, safety we're, aspect we're of all, it. We're already putting in the order for that too. So we already got that working. So um, to like have it on a regular basis though, where it's yeah, like, happening yeah. like once, are, a week, are, once a month. Yeah. Michelle, they're already working on the 10 freeway going west. They're working on that on-ramp right now to clean that all up and get the homeless out. Caltrans has been out there, I right. think three times already within the last two weeks to get it cleaned up. So we're working on that right now. There are a lot, of, maybe there's a lot of things we're working on right now that we have to work with the different agencies, but we're Absolutely. getting it done as sort of Rick and then Peter. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, Michelle, I, I hate to bust the bubble. The second you start giving them the porta potties, the wash stations, that becomes like an official encampment saying, you recognize it, let's go ahead and make it, if you're gonna stay here, let's make it safer. We don't wanna make it safe, we wanna basically get them out, clean it up. The second you clean it up, it's Motel 6. You're gonna clean no, it up, I... they're gonna come back. Unless you put something in its place, they're coming right back and they're gonna, it's, it's like having room service. You can't right. do that. I you completely gotta... agree with you. Yeah. Like right. I said, yeah. I, you told okay. me on Monday, I've been happy, try it. now if I'm I Right. Regarding the Cotaraugus Tunnel, is there a chance we can get the Caltrans to repair and raise the height of the fence that is before and after the tunnel on each side? They're currently low, they're, they're messed up, and as you know, people are swinging you know, bags of feces and trash back there. Is there an ask we could do? Yeah, can you, can, can, you send me exact, can you send me exactly where the fences that need to be replaced? Sure. And, and we will work on that. I already got it on the list. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to need that. At, we'd be great at Cal, to do that at Garth as well, because it's the same, same issue. Okay. That'd be great. And uh, just above Bedford, above Bedford, along yeah. the freeway, also somebody even yanked a stupid like couch bed all the way to the top, right next to the okay. freeway. And Ridiculous. may I ask you just a procedural question? Do, if there's a homeless person that wants help, can we help get them a voucher? Or what services can we call upon to help somebody if they uh, want help? Okay, Peter. Well, 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 okay, we're, we're, let's talk about two types of homeless people. With, with veterans, I can get them immediate housing with a, with a, they would get housing today. I just have to take them to 214 over in uh, the VA. And, Cause that's what we were doing before, but we've run into where we've been, they say they're veterans and because we don't have the computer to run them, we have, we take them to the VA and then we find out they're not veterans. So, but if they're a veteran, they got their DD-214 or they got their VA card and they're homeless. We can get them food, housing, showers, everything awesome. that day right now. Okay. I mean, immediately it can happen with a um somebody who's not a veteran yeah. we could get lost out there because i lost i talked to the mayor's office um very strongly when they were having problems over at the um i'm surprised melinda is not on this call uh but she, her and her husband were having problems over at hargis where yeah. the homeless guy had taken over the storage parking lot the public storage parking lot. And they kept calling, uh, I guess Liz Carlin was calling Lhasa. I said, screw it. I called my contacts over at the mayor's office and said, this is, un we can't do this. I need somebody out there. And they got Lhasa out there the next day. The guy refused it because you know, that that's his God given right. He could refuse it. Right. But if somebody really wants to go into housing, we could get them housing the next day. So if, if I were to somehow 
come across somebody, who would I call? Would I maybe perhaps call you? Or? Call me, call me, and I'll call Angie over at the mayor's office, and we'll get somebody out from Lhasa. It may not be that day because of that, but the next day they'll be out there for them. Peter, good Thanks. luck. They don't want the house. Oh, I understand. But I just want to understand no. the process. No, I understand that, Rick. But they always say, oh, you know, when, when, when they're there with their hat in their hand and they're saying, we need more tax money because we don't have enough housing. Well, who's going into the housing? Nobody is. Right. And right. that's the thing that there is. So there is housing available. We just need to be able, and that's where part of it is getting lost out there three times a week, making it where the streets yeah. are clean, where, where they got to keep moving around. I mean, yeah. I'm not trying to be mean to the homeless, but what I want them to do is to understand that they need to get back into housing and, and to get a life and, and, you know, yes. have everything. Yes. You know, that's the American dream. Now, if I understand the law, it was the, the Boise versus the Supreme Court case that made it, the, the Supreme Court said you cannot call homeless criminal behavior unless the city has the beds to put them in. So I guess our goal is the city to have enough beds so one day a week when the COVID's over, we can call being homeless a criminal activity unless they go into a bed. Do I understand it correctly? That, that, that is a simplification of it, but yeah. And what we need to do is get it where they're getting into the beds. The beds are available. They have beds available. They have housing available. Uh, if this group would agree to it, I'm going to present it to the council office to start getting money to be able to buy the Venice Motel and turn that so that it doesn't look so wretched with that chain link fence around it. And to I'd actually have it. That, Terrence. I'd like to help you. All right. Okay. Well, then, then if this group agrees, we'll start presenting it and getting it where we can get. See, that's business. something we can do. Yeah. There's all the money there. They, they keep talking about the, you know, HHH and HA, you know, and this mound and this and that. And now they're talking about getting FEMA money to help the homeless. Well, right. Where, that's, so if we could solve Cattaraugus, solve Garth, and then go, then attack this Venice Hotel as a as a as a thing for the homeless, yes, I would feel like we're kind of hitting both ends. I don't want you to be here in these tunnels or this park, but I'm right. really working hard to get you a place 100%. where you can be. Right, 100%. I would feel good in my heart about that. Right, and if we got 20, 20 homeless, you know, it's a twenty eight room now uh, shelter or actually homeless housing. We've done that. So that, that's what we need to do. And then we'll also start, Rick, we'll start working with the businesses because I know a lot of businesses are upset about, you know, they're trying to conduct business. And with COVID, you know, their business is being killed. So how we, about the swap meets? Is the swap meets on the agenda or not really? Yes, it is because we want to talk about that too because we tried to do it with the uh, two captains before. And she was like, well, the people in the community want it. Do the Where people is the swap in the meet? Uh, it, it's on Venice, Venice Boulevard, Boulevard on, name a street, it's on there. Oh, it's yeah. just, that it's, it's going to yes. be running between like uh, yeah, yeah. Los and again, Robertson. Type yeah. Of thing. yeah. Right. Cataractus, you know. It's terrible. Cataractus. It's terrible. Yeah. But that was part of the problem, though, is because they felt that they were getting, the squeaky wheels were saying, we like it, we want it. But it sounds they're like they're blocking this. the sidewalks. All and right, they're on, and they're on private property. Without well, permits. I remember the the preschool hosed them down one time. That was funny. The lady from the preschool hosed them down. Yeah. Good for and, her. And, 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 and I hate to tell you, but she broke the law. But oh well. You can't hose it down. Hey guys, I hate to say it. I've got a Castle Heights meeting that started 15 minutes ago. All I right. hate to say it, Peter. Um, I'll I'll touch base with you, but my Me my too. gut feeling is. You got to do it privately. I don't think it can go through the whole council because then the council's in on it. I well, think Peter's got the right idea. Keep some it. of this stuff we're going to do through the council. We're getting the lights over in Cataraguas. Oh, sure. We have sure. to do that. And I understand what you're saying, Rick. Uh, and the uh, yeah. One last thing. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've called, reported, texted the whole nine yards with the whole stealing the power. Their excuse is, well, you got to keep calling because we can't come out on our own. It's only when we get a report. So what do I have to do? Send a report in every single day that the power has been there? Uh... Who did you originally talk to? You got to okay. get a hold of their boss. That's what you got to do. I, well, I understand I that. Where I need to know who it is. And we'll, who was it, Rick? What it was a secretary with uh, street lighting. That was as far as I got. All right. 
That, that it's actually Eddie Chavez is the one who's in charge of that. I'll just send it. Do, do, okay, so they went from them? stealing it on the north end, on the Garth end, on the north side. Now they're doing it from the freeway on the south side, a yellow extension cord that's all taped up. So it's kind of incognito. Now are they stealing from the state or are they stealing from street lighting? Street lighting. Okay. The other dude on Beverly Wood, I think they finally cut him out. By the time they welded up the junction box and, and siliconed the junction, the concrete box, sure. he, he was going across the street through the street. So you run it over every time you drive up the street. I don't see that happening anymore as much. All right. All right. Well, we have a bunch, we, we have like nine things, but some of it is grouping together. The Catarag, Cataragus and Garth, the lights. Uh, the, fen the, the Caltrans fencing on the Cataragus, uh, let's see. And, uh, and Garth. And Garth, but there was one other one and I didn't can get we, that before. Can we, can we get no overnight parking in the Cataragus tunnel as well? Right there, isn't it? <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I thought that was no RVs over 26 or no vehicles over 26 feet. Doesn't matter. We got a guy. It's, tw it's, 21 foot, it's nine foot by 21 foot. We got it's, a guy in a blue RV. van. He's been that living there for forever. And other people just parked their car there for a week. So now and we want no parking from th from 11 to 5. I believe that's already there, guys. The problem is that they're no, not enforcing it. Well, that's we'll why let, the guy. No, well, that's why the well, guy well, before we go on, there. Friday when I'm over there, we'll check the sign. All right. That's what we can do. Around you, what time do you think Greg, you're going to be you're right, that Laura. way? Let's, let's get that. Guys, I, I hate to say it. I got to run. Right, I Rick. appreciate it. We'll Peter, talk I'll talk you. with you later. Thank you, guys. Hey, Ricky. Thank you. When are you talk meeting in the Garth Tunnel? Let us know. Friday about Friday about 7, 7.30. PM? Yes. I can meet you work. then. I'll be back. Okay. I'll be back. And actually, if you want to meet over at my house and we can walk over from there, that's fine. Um, because I'm right there. And folks can actually just gather at my home if they want. You're at Cataragus of... and... Oh, no. I'm no, talking about a guard. The guard tunnel. No, yeah, tunnel. but we're, we're going to go to the Cataragus tunnel first. Check that okay. out. And then I could come over to yours, Michelle. And then we, we okay. can take a look on that. Okay. All right. Parents, I, I got to run also, but are we going to have another meeting, you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is going to be an ongoing thing. We, we, there is no way we could solve all these problems with thank one you. meeting. Jason, no, thank you for the wonderful. donation. Jason, yeah, thank Peter, you very much. Please let me know how else we can help, okay? Uh, hey, can, you, can I give, you your, give me your phone number while I got you? What's your phone number? Sure. 714-360-360. 3984. Three, uh, three, okay. Jason, thank you so much. I'll give you a buzz. And, and Jason, when I'm back over the weekend, come by. I'll give you some tomatoes. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Are we all right. parents? Yes. So, yeah. Thank you so. again for everything. I, I, I really appreciate this meeting. I really appreciate you jumping in to try and help mm -hmm. with all of this stuff. Thank I you, have parents. to tell you, being on my own, um, it's been particularly scary. And, yeah. um, you know, having, I, you know, I spent five years battling cancer, you know, mm -hmm. from 2014, uh, basically 2014 to uh, 2018. And as I started to like branch out, that's when we got like the whole coat. And then I had to have a spinal surgery. So right. as I've been starting to branch my life out, this is when, you know, it's like, I can't, I'm under like medical orders to go for a walk and I don't feel safe going for a walk. Right. You know? So well, that's why we're going to work on this because nobody should feel danger yeah. while they're walking in our own neighborhoods. That that is ridiculous. Exactly. Absolutely. So and it doesn't right. matter if you're on Venice Boulevard walking through or if you're coming from Robertson side. It shouldn't be that way at all. And that's right. why, as neighbors, we should be working together. And that's been our problem. We've been too much. And don't take this wrong. We've been too much Rainier Village, or we've been La Cienega Heights, or we've been Crestview, and not together saying, we all have the same problems. We got to tackle this all together. Yep. And, and, I because, and I hate to say it, but I'm a union member. So with being a union member, you know, an injury to one is an injury to all. And that's what we're looking at right now. Absolutely. That, this is an injury to everybody right now. And 100%. So... That's what we're going to do. So um, Friday, uh, Peter, 7 p.m., would that work for you over in Cataragus? 
Yes, it would. Okay, great. I may try and meet you guys over there anyway, just to sort of say hello and you know see you face to face, Peter, because we've talked a lot in the thing. Yes, and Michelle, it's lovely to be in the IRL. And and, and, uh, and I, I'm sorry you're going through this problem. Let's try to fix it. Yeah. Well, I that's mean, what yeah, we're doing. But it's feeling like you know we're coming together as community, and that's the most important thing for me. Watching us all come together as community, like I said, I've been living in the neighborhood since 20, 2004. And I've had the, owned the house since 2001. And watching the neighborhood grow, watching the neighborhood come together and, you know, turn into different forms of itself has been incredibly wonderful. And I love that it is a, a community that is of mixed socioeconomic strata. I love that it's different ethnicities. I love that it is not homogeneous. I love that we are unique. We're, we are a uniquely pocket of Los Angeles. Yes, and in some ways, people don't realize that's what we are. Well, you know? well, well the neighborhood council yeah. does because that's why we're called the South Robertson Neighborhoods with an S Council because there are so many diverse uh, yeah. parts of our neighborhood. And that's why we are what we are. And that's why we're helping to straighten this out and get things done. So uh, it's been going on too long that things are not getting done. That Caltrans isn't taking sure. responsibility for what they have. The city yeah. of Los Angeles, you heard Rick say it. So we're going to work on this and get this. But I will see it. who's ever there at Cataragus uh, at 7 p.m. We'll be there. We'll check out I'll the meet you there. We'll check out the parking. Then we'll go over to the Garth Tunnel and do the same thing. And we'll measure out the sidewalks. Sounds great. I'll see you guys then. I'm going to sign off because I'm going to enjoy it. Absolutely, because our meeting's actually over. So I appreciate yeah. you all for the first one. We'll have the public safety next month, you know, the first Monday. And then we'll have another uh, one of these meetings also. Okay? Awesome. Yes. Absolutely. Sounds great. All right. Thank you much. Have a great Take night. Care. You too. Hi. Um, I had, oops. Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm leaving. Talk to okay. you soon, Terrence. Bye. Absolutely. Martin. Hey, all right. So um, I'm going to sign off now as well. Thanks, Terry. Hey, hey, real quick, though. You heard that these people want it done. Martin. Uh, right, I'm yeah, I got to sign off now. Thanks. All right. Bye now.